Welcome to Jesus Changed My Heart. Lesson 1. Jesus Made Me Honest With Myself. Every person is an individual, and everyone has a heart or soul. And in that heart, there is an image of self. Most people have a false self-image and thereby demean themselves. The results are tragic. All they could have been worthy of, all they could have achieved, their beautiful destiny, is lost. How do you see yourself? Do you like what you see? Forget for the moment the image that you present to others. Put aside the trivial things such as the appearance of your body or your various status symbols. Ignore even important ethical characteristics such as unselfishness, honesty, sociability. I'm talking about really deep things. For example, self-worth. What value do you put on yourself? What do you think you are worthy of? Or take, for example, potential and purpose. What could you achieve? What is the best result you can expect from your life? What do you see as your destiny? Believe it or not, the answers to these deeper questions is exactly the same for every human being. Yes, exactly the same for everyone. At your local bookstore, you will find several books concerned with self-image. Psycho-Cybernetics, The Power of Positive Thinking, Think and Grow Rich, and books like that. They show you how you can condition or reprogram your mind to accept and act upon a new image instead of the one you have now. Unfortunately, all these books leave a big, gaping hole. Came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul, like the sea billows roar. Since Jesus came into my heart. Oh, good day. You know what I was talking about before? About your self-image. And it being based on your answers to those really important questions. Like, what is your destiny? How much are you worth? What's your potential and purpose in life? If, if you've got the answers to those questions wrong, well then you've got your self-image wrong. And if you've got your self-image wrong, then the whole basis of your life is up the creek. Those books back in the bookstore I was talking about, they're not really much help. They explain to you that if your self-image isn't right, then your life isn't right. But the trouble is, they tell you to invent a new self-image for yourself. Conjure up your own new self-image. Well, you might conjure up an image that's just as wrong as the one you've already got now. That's the gaping hole in those books. You might transform yourself into a monster. Or at best, you might just 
dream up some image that's impossible to achieve. And you may find yourself disillusioned and disappointed. The point is, if you're lost, you need someone else to show you the way. Now here I am, lost in the bush. Wouldn't have a clue how to get out of here. What's the use of me scratching my head and saying, well, I'll go that way. It might be the wrong way. Or I might say, I'll go that way. It might be the wrong way. Of course, I'm not really lost, I'm just kidding. I'm supposed to go that way. I'll see you later. If you believe that your life isn't what it should be, you can be pretty sure that it's because you're not seeing yourself as you should be. Your self-esteem is low. If you could look at yourself differently, if you could find honest and true reasons to think much more highly of yourself, not more highly than you ought to think, but as highly as you honestly and truly should, if you could realise what a wonderful person you really are deep down, then you would soon change outwardly into that different person. You would no longer be underrated and unfulfilled. Your self-esteem, your personal image of yourself is a very powerful influence on what you become. Whatever your self-image, that's what you tend to become. Whatever you believe you are now, that's what you will tend to change into in the future. That much the popular psychology books have in common with Christianity. But now comes the gaping hole. You can make the mistake of concentrating on froth and bubble on the surface of yourself rather than the deep down you. These outward things like good looks and money, talents, status symbols and career, social relationships and so forth. They are unimportant. They are part of the outward you that is perishing day by day. You've got to find the real you, deep down underneath the froth and bubble. Get your deep self sorted out and all the rest up on the surface will take care of itself. But how can you find that real truth about yourself? Just like what's his name who couldn't find his way out of the bush, so you cannot find your true self by yourself. If you are confused and mistaken now about who you are or should become, then how can you replace that confusion with a clear and true picture? By yourself, you can't. When dark clouds seem to overshadow your life, and when you yearn for some light to dawn in your heart, it won't come from within you. It has to come from someone else someone who really knows you and can enlighten you. Of course, you know who that someone is. Jesus, God's Son, and your Creator. What he tells you is sure and true. You will do well to pay attention to it until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. 2 Peter 1, 21. Let Jesus enlighten you about yourself. Jesus is the true light who enlightens every person who comes into the world. That means you. The Son of God has come and given you understanding that you may know him who is the true God and eternal life. And to know that is to know yourself truly. Imagine you find a letter in your mailbox that says you have become heir to a house. Well, actually I had something a wee bit grander in mind. Yes, that's more like it. Imagine you became heir to this house. 
that would raise your self-image, wouldn't it? But what if you inherited not only this house, but that one, and that one, and all these others as well? You'd really start to feel like somebody, wouldn't you? Yet you already are heir to a great inheritance unimaginably richer. If you believe and act upon the truth that Jesus reveals about yourself, then you have a place of your own reserved in heaven. You belong in God's family. You are meant to be an heir of God and a fellow heir with Jesus Christ. You are not a weed, you are a flower. You are an heir of God and that's your destiny. If you deny yourself that image, then you are not being honest with yourself. Accept this correct image of yourself, and you cannot demean yourself any more. People can be like sheep. They just go on living day by day, never apparently asking themselves why. Where are they going? Where will they end up? You have been given understanding of what life is all about. It's not just a few decades of rushing about accomplishing God knows what, only to be dumped to decompose under a tombstone. The Son of God has come and given us understanding. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so let us bear the image of the man from heaven. This mortal must put on immortality. We, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord. You are what a sheep isn't, and you understand what a sheep doesn't. You are a son or daughter of the Most High God, and your destiny is to inherit His eternal glory. That's how God sees you, and that's the image you should present to others. But most important of all, that's how you should see yourself. Since Jesus came into my heart And the gates of the city beyond I can see Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart. Ba 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 black tea, have you been lost? Yes, 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 the faith that grew. 
Just as we seek a high place from which to receive better images from the electromagnetic waves, so we must raise our spiritual antenna above in order to receive a true image of ourselves. But not only do we demean ourselves, we also deceive ourselves. How clever we humans are at being pretenders. We almost manage to convince ourselves that our masquerade is real. We think of the Antichrist as the great deceiver. But the Bible says there are many antichrists, and most of us are our own antichrists, deceiving our own foolish selves. We pretend we are wise. Jesus says, let no one be self-deceived. Become foolish that you may become wise. Stop deceiving yourself. We pretend that wild and immoral behavior is having a good time. Jesus says, don't be deceived. Become sober-minded as you ought and stop sinning. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. We pretend that what we say is smart. Jesus says, if you do not bridle your tongue, you deceive your own heart. By your words you will be condemned. We pretend that our money and possessions are really important. Jesus says, the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches enter into your heart and choke the word of truth. These examples of self-deception miss one critical fact. Self-deception gradually hardens your heart. The longer you deceive yourself, the harder your heart becomes, hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. But if you are taking an interest in this program, you can stand assured that your heart is not like concrete yet. Stand still now in your life and examine yourself before God. Self-deception is the most serious problem you have to deal with. Everything depends on you sorting this out. And that includes being honest about the sin in your life. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we refuse to be honest with ourselves, we will destroy ourselves. That's right. Not just demean and deceive ourselves, but destroy. Paul was honest with himself when he said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 7, 15-25 This self-dishonesty, this demeaning and deceiving of self is destructive. It destroys self. That destruction is the worst imaginable. The Bible calls it simply death. But it is not the death marked by tombstones. It is eternal death. That ultimate destruction begins with a false image of yourself and deceiving yourself about your sins. You destroy your own soul. But the destructive power ruins your life here below, too. At best, it makes your life fruitless and useless. A house of cards that will surely fall down. You must stop this self-destruction. Unlike the vast majority who keep going down that path, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and there are few who find it. It is so sad to see so many people destroying themselves, spoiling not only this life, but the life to come. Make up your mind that you will not be one of them. Don't destroy your peace. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You need not destroy that peace in your heart. Don't destroy your profit. What shall it profit a person who gains the whole world but loses his own soul? Your soul, the real you, is of more value than all of this world's goods put together. You are an heir of God, remember. That's what you have gained.
by being born into this world, it would be utterly foolish to let that gain go. Keep it at all costs. Don't destroy your passion. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. Even this passion is increased when Jesus comes into your heart. He says, love one another as I have loved you. Jesus loved as none has ever loved, and now he sets the standard of love which can be yours. You can love as Jesus loved, and this lovely devotion is not imaginary, it is real. It is not out of reach. Don't destroy it. Grasp it and enrich your life. Make it abound more and more in knowledge and depths of insight. Philippians 1, 9 to 11. Don't destroy your praise. Having believed you were marked in him with a seal, God's possession to the praise of his glory. Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. The Christian life is lived on that principle. Fear God and give him the glory. Revelation 14.7 And honour God with your body. 1 Corinthians 6.20 I am possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure Since Jesus came into my heart And no dark clouds of doubt now my pathway obscure Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. There have been people who have been considered great because they excelled in one of these things. They were people who had great peace and were peacemakers or who had great passion and whose love seemed to reach out to thousands. Others led lives of immense profit and value, not in monetary terms, but in spiritual values. There were others who were deserving of praise and seemed to have a glory beyond perverted human pride, a glory that bespoke the highest nobility of human nature. But the best of them all were those who honestly saw themselves as God's servants. What other devotion or purpose can equal that? Mary, the mother-to-be of Jesus, spoke these exultant words. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. Mary's lovely attitude and heart is not unique. The potential is there in your heart and in every human heart to be like Mary and like others who have had great peace, great profit, great passion and great praise and glory in their lives. I can almost hear you say, no, 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 not I. But why not you? Why do you demean yourself? Why do you not see the purpose which God has for you? Your true destiny, your true potential. Why do you deceive yourself that you are not one of God's sons or daughters with an eternal inheritance awaiting you? Why not you? You can change your heart through Jesus Christ, our Lord, so that nothing is lost or destroyed, but rather your life here and in eternity regains and retains its fullness. Today we hear much said about the problems of divorce, drugs, disease and such like. Why are people acting in ways that are self-destructive? It all gets back to being honest with self. If you could only make people see 
what their true destiny is and how sin in their lives is robbing them of that destiny. If you could only change their hearts, the self-destruction would stop. And things like drugs, disease and divorce, when these are the victim's own fault, are only the tip of the iceberg. We've seen how much deeper the destruction goes and will go in the end. Don't you destroy yourself. Allow Jesus into your heart so that you can say, Jesus made me honest with myself. No longer do I demean myself and deceive myself and destroy myself. Not since Jesus came into my heart, he changed my heart and he made me whole again. Mind you, a life transformed into the image of Christ. A new life like we've been talking about. A new life that follows a new image of yourself. An honest assessment of yourself that sees yourself as God sees you and that lines up with God's purpose for you. That life's not so easy. It certainly will be tougher than the life you're following at present. Through much tribulation we must enter the kingdom of God. Acts 14.22 But the thing is, it's worth the struggle now. You are God's child, an heir with your own personal guaranteed place reserved in God's heavenly and eternal home. You're God's heir child and you can keep sight of the light and no enemy can force God's heir child to stray from the way. God sets his seal on his children and ensures that they are not tempted beyond what they can bear. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 to 13. This new vision of yourself is real and true. It changes your life utterly. Change your heart from doubt to faith and assurance. Change your heart about the things which alienate you from God. If you do this, you are ready for the ceremony of immersion in water that symbolizes the death and the burial and the resurrection from death which Jesus underwent for your sake. This ceremony unites you with Jesus. The old person you were is crucified with him. A new person is raised up. Your faith in Jesus can bring this to pass. You are, so to speak, born again. You are now right with God, forgiven, lovingly accepted as God's child, absolutely assured of your inheritance beyond this world, provided you hold your new self-image before you, which God enables you to do. Your name is written in the book of life. Your personal value is now reckoned and understood. Your life is now fruitful and full of purpose. Thousands of years ago, a man called David wrote a song about this wonderful forgiveness. But in that song he said, I acknowledged my sin to you, Lord, and my iniquity I did not hide. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Psalm 32. When self-deception ceases and one is honest before God about the error in one's life, then forgiveness can be found. Jesus died that this forgiveness might be made possible. And those who believe this truth may enter into the death of Jesus and receive the benefits of the blood that he shed on the cross as a sacrifice for sin. Many hundreds of years ago, a man named Paul took a good, honest look at himself in terms of how he stood in the sight of God and he said, O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me? from this body of death and his answer was and I hope it will be your answer too I thank God 
I will be delivered through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for watching. You are invited to visit simplybible.com.